That's terrible. Even Yoru? Renja looks deeply concerned. Looks. Taking a nap was the right choice. I'm calm enough to hide my impatience and irritation. I heard everything. Everything about what, exactly? Everything about your work. You have a real interesting job, Renja. <laughs> I guess that cat's out of the bag. Yes, I am more of a bad girl than my appearances suggest. Renja speaks with a smile, as if nothing has changed. It's almost chillingly eerie how normal she's acting. But it's not enough to break me. I'm no saint. I'm in no position to lecture anyone on their life choices. But I cannot support yours, so... You're saying you can't work with me, is that correct? Sorry. I made sure not to let you see them, but I have many subordinates. I'm sure they can help you find your roommate. So won't you let us help you? No thanks, I'll search for Yoru myself. Is it because I'm a bad girl? I can't say that has nothing to do with it. There are two types of ghosts in this town. The first are, honestly, trash. They can't question any abnormalities this town has. And obviously, I don't mean it's against their philosophy or religion. I mean they're genuinely unable to notice that anything's abnormal. You could explain it to them, but they wouldn't really understand. To them, they would just be empty words. They're ghost NPCs. The other type are ghosts who recognize the chaotic state this town is in. Those who know exactly what this town is. For ages, every ghost has been either one or the other. But you're special, Sayoko. You notice the town's abnormalities, yet you know nothing. Instead, you compensate your lack of knowledge with an excess of power. You're incomplete. But that's what's fascinating about you. Gee, thanks. I want to make you complete. And together, we need to dethrone the authority of the priest and his church. And to do it properly, we need to turn this humiliating situation on its head. He shouldn't have all that power. The two of us should. And to achieve this goal, I need peace of mind. That you won't ever betray me. You're not going to try and persuade me now, are you? If you're not with me, then you might as well just say you don't want to know the truth. For all eternity. In either case, just promise me you won't get in the way of my work. So, what'll it be? Astonishingly, I hesitate. I should be refusing her offer without a second thought. But I just can't break myself to say I don't need to know. I've always been an outsider. I've been left in the dark as to why the priest detained Yoru in the church, or why Pacifica and Anya are gone. And it's because of my complete ignorance. The biggest example of that ignorance is this whole sweet seller business. If I only had the proper knowledge, I could recognize so many more things by myself. My greed for knowledge has dulled my judgment. I realize I've broken into a cold sweat. My eyes are wandering around pathetically. It's like I'm searching for something to help me out of this mess. My eyes stop on something. And that something is, in some sense, the answer I've been looking for. Liar. And I only catch sight of that something by complete coincidence. There's a dresser in the corner of Renja's room. And on that dresser is a familiar tube of lipstick. Or rather, the lipstick... Or rather, the lipstick-shaped ultra-small gun straight out of a spy movie that Pacifica ordered from Anya. A super cool weapon for the super cool Pacifica. Even Yoru was ecstatic when she saw it in action. If I'm not mistaken, Anya was in the process of mass producing them. If Renja has one, then who exactly is she? Come to think of it, one of the assassins who broke into my room also had a gun that was identical to one in Pacifica's possession. I don't want to think any further than that, but my brain calmly connects the dots on its own, forming a disturbing outline. Oh, what's wrong? That, that lipstick over there... 
you're interested in makeup? We have more pressing things to talk about than makeup, don't we, Sayoko? Renja looks at me incredulously, as if she has no idea why I would bring up the lipstick right now. She's playing dumb. If I had come here without getting a wink of sleep first, I probably wouldn't have had the confidence to do anything about it or even notice it. Her acting looks quite natural. That's right, her acting looks quite natural indeed. Mind if I take a closer look at it? Be my guest. I pick up the lipstick with slow, wide movements. It's unused. The seal is still intact. I see. So the one Pacifica used back then was a prototype, huh? Perhaps this is a production unit from the first manufactured lot. Mind if I try using this lipstick? You sure can be stubborn sometimes. Fine. Keep wasting time then. I'm moderately surprised. It seems Renja doesn't know what this thing actually is. If she did, she wouldn't be keeping up this farce. Even if she were playing dumb, she gains nothing by allowing me to pick this thing up. Is she confident that I'm suddenly shot? Is she confident that if I suddenly shot her with this thing, I'd miss? Is she confident that even if I did hit her, she'd be fine? No, wait. What if I'm just a big idiot and this isn't a lipstick-shaped gun, but just plain old lipstick? Suddenly, a short and sweet thought sweeter than any sweet sold by a sweet seller, flashes in the back of my head. It's so short and sweet and stupid, it makes me smile to myself. Renja lets out a displeased, huh. I decide to take a gamble on that thought. I think I'm starting to get it. There was a fundamental flaw in my deduction. This isn't proof that Pacifica's colluding with her. In fact, I dare say it's proof that there's no collusion at all. The lipstick was taken from Pacifica, maybe even stolen. If someone's holding her captive, it wouldn't be a surprise if they also stole a cosmetic bag from her too. Are you that interested in the lipstick? I received it from one of my subordinates. As a small present, I suppose. I'm a good boss, aren't I? I look into Renja's eyes. She seems to be confused. I can tell she's losing a little confidence in her discernment. Like. Why is this girl so obsessed with that lipstick? Did I miss something? Are you that interested in some run-of-the-mill lipstick? Sitting before me is no longer the mysterious, delicate, beautiful girl I once knew. Just one measly ghost who can't even stand up. I open the seal on the lipstick. I see. So you move the bottom part like this, and... Renja, the way you try to make friends is incredibly flawed. The, the recoil's heavier than I expected. I was aiming for her right arm, but I hit her in her left egg. <laughs> I was aiming for her right arm, but I hit her in her left leg. So much for accuracy. Though I guess you shouldn't expect much from a gun that's designed for form over function. If you want me to be your friend, just say so. You didn't have to erase all of my existing friends. But in any case, it's exactly what I need right now. Give me back my friends. No. Suddenly, my vision shakes. Something hit me in the back of the head. The concussion lasts only for a few seconds, but it looks like that's all they needed. I feel an intense discomfort at the nape of my neck. The pain only comes a second later. I reflexively reach back. Someone stabbing me. Something with a characteristic shape identifiable by touch alone. A syringe. Ugh. Damn it. I walked right into that one. I curse my lack of precaution as I instinctively pull out the syringe. When it tumbles to the floor, I notice it's several times bigger than the ones they use for vaccines or drawing blood. It sends shivers down my spine. As far as I can tell, the cylinder's still about a third full, so it's not like all of it's been injected inside me. Not that that's any consolation, mind you. That's our flagship product. Its sweet flavor makes it popular with girls. It's also popular with boys, since it can be subtly mixed into food and drink. A shock runs through the back of my eyeballs, down to my hip bone. Or rather than an impact, it's more of a sudden loss of strength. They say the closing years of the Great War were a tragic time, you see. No matter how hard I try to brace my legs, my vision sways and sinks. 
as a result. That painkiller saw heavy usage during that period. It was already an old drug at the time, and there are several conflicting theories as to why it made such a resurgence. Perhaps it was because its use and side effects were well known, or perhaps it was due to collusion between pharmaceutical companies. Who knows what the truth is? I thought my legs were supporting my body weight, but before I know it, I'm on my knees. In any case, it's a potent drug. At low doses, it acts as a sedative, granting soldiers relaxation and sleep. At high doses, it acts as a tranquilizer to neuralize neurotic soldiers. Before I know it, my upper body has collapsed, and I'm down to my hands and knees. Well, it wasn't the full amount, but that should do it. Regardless, I'm able to maintain my vision, so I keep watching. Isn't that right, Matt? <laughs> yes, ma'am. In her hands is a familiar silver object. Anya told me about it. It's the soldier control device used in the closing years of the Great War. Normally, you should have been in a comatose state long ago, but you shrugged it off. You've consumed enough quantities over a long enough period of time to have grown a physical dependence, and yet you've shown absolutely no signs of addiction. Are ninjas just resistant to poison? What are you going to do to me? This. Miss Matt runs a scalpel across my wrist, at the softest spot a little above the base. Oh, this is gross. Instead of pain, I feel fear, and by then, the blood's already flowing. Miss Matt seems so skilled at this. She must have done this many times before. I try to shake her off my arm. I shouldn't have done that. It only causes the blood to overflow even more. My body's limp from fear, despair, and helplessness. The lukewarm blood spilling down my wrist doesn't even feel like it's my own blood. Miss Met plops the silver pill bug into the incision. The pill bug makes a whirring startup noise as it tries to crawl inside. It stings. If this is a dream, I wish I'd wake up, and yet I can't peel my eyes away from the nightmare. Jeez. It'll take some time for it to reach your spine, so let's have a nice chat while we wait. I see. So once that happens, I'm out, huh? You want to enjoy watching me suffer until then, Renja? I can feel your sadistic gaze pouring down on me. If the drugs didn't work, then maybe this thing won't work either. I'm not sure if I actually said that. I can't clearly feel my lips. It's as if the whole world is behind frosted glass. But at least I can think clearly on my side of the frosted glass. According to what Wrench is saying, my body seems to eliminate drugs faster than normal. With a little bit of time, maybe I can regain free use of my body. But that little bit of time is the problem. The pill bug isn't moving very fast, but my arm isn't very long either. Perhaps. Sounds like an experiment worth... I don't hear what she says after that. Or rather, I hear it, but only as disjointed sounds. I'm only able to catch the nuance. The way I make friends is flawed. That's none of your business. Why make friends with someone who already has friends? That's like setting yourself up for number two at best and racing to the bottom. No thanks. I'm nobody's number two, and I don't want to be below anybody else. My ears are ringing. Like what happens after you've heard a loud sound. Like a bomb went off next door. Something squirming on the other side of the frosted glass. My consciousness sticks its face up against the glass to try and see what's going on out there. But that's just a metaphor. My consciousness doesn't have a face or eyes. All it can do is feel. I push those feelings out of my mouth in the form of words. It's true that there were rumors about you, but in reality you were into boys. You were 13. It was winter. I was speaking with your dad, acting friendly. Needed to get some medicine for your mom. All you could do was watch. What are you trying to get at? I'm only tracing out the silhouettes behind the frosted glass. Honestly, I don't know what any of this means. I keep talking, as if to feel things out with the tip of my finger. Your dad was always so apologetic to you, because he thought it was his fault that your legs turned out that way, and that you didn't have a mother anymore. It was an uncomfortable way to comfort you. Everyone respected your personality. That's why you never bothered to learn about equal relationships. At least that's what you thought, didn't you, you coward? What's wrong with just using the weapons you've been given? 
I'm not myself. I wouldn't say things like this. Your first prey was the kind, chubby, older mama who wore thick glasses. You knew you had good looks, but you were afraid to use it to sway the opposite sex, so you didn't know much about them. So you disguised yourself with a made-up character. How could I do something like this? How could I expose someone's weaknesses, criticize them for it, and make sure they can't return to the status quo? No, I'm not that weak. Yes, you are. You don't know me. I am you. We both are. I hear Rendra raise her voice in anger. And yet I'm and yet I think I'm smiling. Even though it's not funny at all. I want to stop already. But I can't take my eyes off the faint silhouettes. I can't stop tracing them with my mind's finger. The sights I see are so cruel they make me shudder, which is why I can't peel my eyes away. A garage floor. A shard of glass piercing the hand. The helplessness of being unable to stand up. Met? The encroaching red flames. Despair. Matt, shut this girl up. I snap back to my sense when I hear that voice, as well as a short, high-pitched electronic sound, like that of a cell phone ringtone. I try to remember what I saw, but like hand sanitizer, it just gives me a tingly feeling before slipping through my fingers and evaporating into thin air. It's me. What? Renja's in a chaotic disarray. The fact that I can tell that means I've recovered a little. I chuckle to myself. I'm starting to feel my lips again. Small signs that I'm recovering. It's just funny to think that I got directly injected with tranquilizers and shrugged it off this easily. It's like I'm superhuman. Super ghost, I mean. There's a bit of trouble at the factory. I'll go there directly. Take care of things here, Matt. Make no mistakes. Yes, ma'am. Promise me. I swear my afterlife on it. If we had known things would turn out like this, you should have implanted the device closer to the spine. If you did, then I'd be going to work with my new friend Sayako by now. You will tomorrow, for sure. Renja smiles for a moment. I don't know if she's regained her composure or if she's just bluffing. Either way, I'm impressed. See? You can say something good every now and then. Once you're done here, you two come see me together. Miss Matt opens the door for Renja to leave, and as Miss Matt does so, she exposes her back. I need to find a way to get away from her as soon as possible, and find a way to remove this bug. How much time do I have left? It can't be much. Somehow, I manage to lift up my upper body. I can move better than I expected, but not as much as I need to. I pick up the cosmetic bottle off of the dresser and hurl it at Miss Matt with all my might as she turns around at the sound. Miss Met doesn't flinch. She just calmly turns towards me, as if it were a roll of toilet paper I threw at her instead of a glass bottle. I need to get up and get out of here. It's at that moment that I realize how numb my feet are. It's like I've been sitting on them for hours upon hours. My legs can barely even support my body. If you really care about that girl, you shouldn't keep humoring her like this. You really believe I have any alternative? Miss Met tackles me when I can't even stand. There's nothing I can do to fight back, especially considering the overwhelming difference in physique. After all the effort I took to get back up, my body ends up back on the floor. There is nothing wrong with dedicating my body and soul to serve her. I would gladly die for her if she simply gave me the word. Most people would never experience such devoted loyalty. Miss Met straddles me, takes out a gun, and points it at me. I'm confused for a second. Speaking as someone who's been shot to death before, the flow of time certainly seems to slow down the moment you're shot. So in other words, this can't actually be taking that much time. In this eternal fleeting moment, I see Miss Met sighs from behind her long bangs. She's crying. Miss Met drops the gun, only to strangle me with her now open hands. I try to shake her hands off of my neck, but I'm unable to even grab her thick arms. I guess it's because of our weight difference. I've been trying my best to ignore it, but the foreign object in my arm is literally crawling under my skin. 
It feels like the bug has slammed into my shoulder bone and is trying to make a slow detour. Now that I feel it, it's driving me crazy. I need to do something to distract myself. After all this thinking, I realize something. If Miss Met were seriously trying to strangle me, it wouldn't be like this. I can feel some hesitation in her hands. That said, she's still strangling me. My vision's gradually fading. If I lose consciousness now, I'm sure I'll be a new me by the time I wake up. Right. The gun. The gun Miss Met dropped. I stop trying to grab her arm, and instead feel around for the gun, which should have landed somewhere near my side. Obviously, Miss Met notices and takes one hand off my neck so she can keep the gun away from me. It's easier for me to breathe now, but that doesn't change the situation. If she tosses the gun out of my reach, it's the end of the line for me. There must be a bug implanted in Miss Met, too. That much is certain from the way she speaks. Oh, right. What did Anya say that one time, again? I take in a deep breath, while the pressure on my neck is loosened. Well, you tell someone to do something and they must do it. Tell them don't and they must not do it. You lay down the rules. I'll be quiet. I won't speak any more. Miss Matt's grip suddenly weakens. Renja's last command was, shut this girl up. I announce my silence, thereby fulfilling that command. In other words, at this moment, she's lost her reason to manhandle me. After checking to see if I can move my pinned lower body, I quickly pull out a leg and kick Miss Met in the gut as hard as I can. Great, I can move my body now. Miss Met falls backwards with the gun in her hand, and it's pointed at me. Unlike a robot or cyborg, these soldiers can think about various aspects of their missions, and can thus violate parts of their orders, as long as they uphold the order overall. That's what Anya said. Living brains have leeway in their decision-making ability. If you think about it logically, what Renju wants isn't for me to shut up, but to be incapacitated non-lethally. If I die, my body will return to the garbage dump, but what happens to the bug? I don't know. In any case, Miss Met's pointing the gun at me, which means it's of no concern to her if her attack kills me. I'm confident I move faster than the wind. I grab the round barrel of the automatic pistol. I can clearly see Miss Met reflexively pull the trigger. I'm out of time, but that's perfect. I push the barrel of the gun pointed at me into my shoulder. Ugh, sparks fly in the back of my eyes, the back of my head, and of course, my shoulder. Perhaps my whole body has turned into sparks. The taste on the tip of my tongue has got to be the taste of a bullet impact. Ah, oh, damn you. I try to hide the pain with a yell as I drive my still perfectly good left fist into Miss Met's jaw. I feel my fist land perfectly. No matter how tough you are, I doubt you can keep fighting properly after a direct jolt to the brain. But this is only the beginning. I'm not done yet. I yank up the neck of my sweater and bite down hard on it. I thrust my fingers into the fresh gunshot wound in my shoulder. The indescribable pain is so intense it sends sparks flying in my eyes. I can't believe I have to gouge out this wound. I wouldn't want other people to hear the groans I'm making. Just a bit more. My fingers touch something hard. It's not bone, it's metal. Get... I can hear the sound of muscle fibers tearing as I pried the bug's legs off my flesh. Wrecked. Oh, that's... <laughs> okay. Okay, that's the end of that. I hold the silver lump on the palm of my left hand. It stops moving as if to say... Now is not the time for work. Perhaps it's detected that it's been exposed to the air. <laughs> I let out a laugh, and then I let out tears. But then I tell myself now isn't the time for either of those things as I refocus my attention. Miss Met sprawled out on the floor beneath me. I picked the gun up off the floor. I need to incapacitate her. I suppose I should shoot out both of her legs. No, wait, I need to free her from the bug. If I pump her head full of lead, She'll wake up in the garbage dump as her true self, won't she? I point the gun at Miss Matt's head. It pains my conscience to do it, so I hesitate a little. Stop. So you're awake. Even if you shoot me, I'll still return to her from the garbage dump on my own two feet, so there's no point. Miss Matt speaks nonchalantly. There's no aggression whatsoever in her voice. In fact, she sounds somehow relieved. In fact, she even sounds somewhat relieved. 
It doesn't look like Renja actually cares about you to me. What matters is who you care about, not who cares about you. That's what matters to me, at least. Even if she continues to look down on me, I find it acceptable. She must be saying that because she's been brainwashed. That has to be the case. Please be the case. But if you had the choice, wouldn't you want to stop doing this? Unfortunately, reality seems to betray my expectations most of the time. I would, but my desire to be by her side is more important. Serving her is what makes me happy. And this time is no exception. What makes you think that way? I don't understand why you believe in her so much. I had an epiphany one day. I realized that this is what I wanted. If I had to put it in words, I thought, she's so beautiful. No objection to that point, correct? You're right about that. Good. We have a near infinite amount of time on our hands. I want to spend that time watching over beauty. And I found a way to guarantee it. A way to be needed. And it will last for all eternity. I'm an atheist, personally. But there's more than one way to get eternal bliss. If you'd rather stop doing this, then can you really say it makes you happy? It's a luxury to live in a situation that's ideal in all aspects. So it's complicated. Complicated? I'm not good with complicated topics. They tire me. I don't understand what you're saying. I want a simple life. I can't suffer for an eternity like you. So I have no regrets making some sacrifices. Even if it means making others unhappy? Are you unaware of how comfortable it is to live a simple, earnest life pouring out love to someone without hesitation? If all you want to do is pour out love for someone, then you'll tire yourself out one day for sure. Especially when that someone abuses you. But I've lived like this for all eternity. Pouring out love is my happiness. It's so fulfilling. I find it way more valuable to love than to be loved. She doesn't know what it means to love someone. She's only ever been loved. Even though she's so beautiful, so perfect. Her greed gives her the desire to be loved, using any means necessary. That's all she lives for. It's so tragic, it's lovely. I find myself unpleasant. I know my mind is warped and repulsive. But I want to keep on doing what I'm doing as long as I can. I don't understand you. I agree with Sayoko. But I might be jealous. To have someone precious enough to you that you'd sacrifice your own existence, it must feel like arriving at a terminal station. The end of a long journey. A happy ending. What? No. When I think about it like that, I guess I can kind of understand. I'm glad it turned out like this. Miss Met lets out a sigh. I felt threatened, no, scared of you. She wanted you to replace me as her right-hand woman. If she were successful, I would lose my place by her side. I can't spend my eternity as a factory guard like the others. That's the opposite of what I want. The factory? Oh, right, the factory. Tell me where it is. I need to hurry. You plan on going with your body in a shape like that? That said, I can't tell you. I've been ordered not to. More importantly, more importantly what? I know I've said this already, but please don't kill me. I don't want to lose what she's given me. At the very least, I know that this is what I truly desire. Miss Met says that with a smile. A smile that's too dazzling for me, since it's brimming with confidence in her conviction. It's such a beautiful smile. For just a moment, she's just as beautiful as Renja. Has Renja ever seen this smile? I'm going. I shoot Miss Matt in the right leg. That way, at the very least, she probably won't be chasing after me anymore. Since I shot with my left hand, the recoil feels stronger than I expected, causing me to stumble a few steps. I try to think of what exactly I can do with only one arm as I rush out of Renja's luxurious room to chase after her. Talk about a neighborhood dispute. Whoa. 